is up you guys it's jerry from team Unco studios back again with another super duper basic mpc beats video using the mpc beat software and the akai mpk mini mach 3. so in this video we're going to kind of go over some of the menu toolbars and like kind of what they correspond to and all that the first video we went over Q links and how to hook up your controller and everything. So we should be pretty good on that. Um, we'll leave a link down below for anybody that needs uh, information on that video that might be a little bit lost. Um, for this video, again, like I said, we're gonna kind of go over uh, menu toolbars, there being a lot of them on the software and kind of what they correspond to and when you click something, what it does and all of that good stuff. Super short video, super basic, you guys. If you are an intermediate person, this is probably not the video for you. Uh, if you're an expert, it's definitely not the video for you. But if you're a beginner just getting into using MPC Beats and the MPC Beats world, these are all really good videos for you to kind of, you know, slow down that process and be able to, you know, watch things and see what they do and all of that before you actually start getting into the full on making songs and all of that. So that's what this video is based off of, you guys. Very, very basic stuff. I by no means am an expert at MPC Beats. We use MPC Beats as a tool in our studio um, to create all kinds of different music. Uh, I've seen people use MPC Beats in a ton of different ways, um, which we do as well. So by no means am I an expert. I might misspeak on some things or name something what I have named it and it might not be what they name it in the MPC Beats Bible, but this is just all off my own personal experience and the goal of our channel in these videos is to be able to help people that are just beginning in the MPC Beats world. So without saying any more, let's go ahead and jump into this video guys on toolbar menus. All right, let's do it. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and jump right into this, okay? So if you look at the screen here, we've got this uh, basic song that I pulled from the archives here and just kind of threw it in. Uh, this particular song is called Laces Out Dan. Uh, if you know the reference, leave a comment down below. Um, but if you notice, I just kind of hit the arrow up to the top and this little window pops down. Now the videos that we're making guys are, are on the Mac. Uh, this is the Mac mini with the uh, M1. We are going to start working on some videos that are PC versions. So, you know, people with PCs can also follow along. But for now, these ones are on the Mac. Okay. So. We kind of got it broken down, like I said, into a couple of different little sections here. The first section that we are going to be working on is going to be this very top section right here in the center, which is kind of has to do with time signatures and all of that and play and stop and all of that good stuff. The next little menu bar we're going to work is this one to the left over here, which we're going to call our main mode toolbar, okay? And this has got all these little things broken down, which those have also little menus to them, and there's all kinds of stuff. We're going to kind of go over that and touch bases on maybe up to about here. Some of these other ones are going to be in different videos that we'll make where we'll show you how to use those and track mute and all of that good stuff. Then if you notice to the far left corner here, we have these three little lines. We're gonna go ahead and call that our file commander, okay? And the file commander is just like anything you would basically see on a PC or Mac if you just pull your file down or whatever and there's all these little windows that come under file, right? So it's basically the same thing you would have like in a browser on, on you know, your computer. So that's where this little thing is. So we're gonna call this like our file folder, file browser, and you can call it whatever you want. But that's what I'm referring to if I happen to refer to that. The next uh, little section we're going to go over is this section down to the bottom here on the left. You see there's these little kind of icons down here now. So all the way to the left, you have this one that's your inspector. So we're just going to show call that one inspector, okay? And then you've got this next one right here that's your bottom panel. Now, when we start to pop out our bottom panel, I will refer to it as my control panel because that's what I usually know it as as you know when you're in a studio or I usually call it my control console so I might say that a couple of times that is what I'm referring to is to the bottom panel okay and then lastly we're going to go over this little section to the bottom right down here which is your expansion packs and kind of where Q-Links are and, and all of that good stuff you know just the little excess stuff um just be forewarned, there's a lot of menus, like I said, within menus. So we're going to be touching bases on those two and kind of where they navigate to and what they do. OK, so again, like I said, we're going to start at the very top up here, you guys. OK, so right at the top, this is just going to be stuff with time signatures. OK, so we've got laces out in here, uh, laces out Dan in. 
okay? So that's our little sample that we got. I'm just not even going to play a lot of it because this is not about samples and the music. It's about learning what the stuff is and what it does. So with this particular song, I've got it running at 115 BPMs. What BPM stands for is beats per minute. All it means is that within one minute at 115, it is going to play 115 beats in that one minute. So the metronome, which is the first icon we're going to kind of go over, is what counts that click, which is that, you know, single beat, which is referred to right here by these little white lines right here. OK, so th this is what those beats are. It's talking about these little white lines, or at least that's the way I try to teach people is that that's what it's talking about. OK, so when you hear a click. Okay, you are going to be able to hear the click now in the, in the beat. So if you can hear it back right there. Okay, there's a click going on now. That click is dropping on each one of these white lines. Okay, so that's what your metronome is. So you're going to kind of set up the song with it. Again, we're going to move on because I'm not going to really go into musical theory or anything like that. It's just what the metronome is. Okay, next you have your time correct. Okay, for the most part, I would leave it on 16 for now. If you're working in 4 4, just again, that's all musical theory stuff. We can make videos on that. But right now, we're just going through the toolbar. Okay, so next to that, you have your bars your beats and your ticks, okay? So that just tells you what bar you're on. It tells you what beat you're on in that bar, okay, and where you're at. Now, some people have asked, how do I get the time in there, right? And it took me a while to kind of figure it out. But if you notice, there's another little icon right under and it says time display, that shows you the time. So now I know I'm at four seconds in that, you know, particular song or whatever you want to call it, okay? So next to that, again, we have our BPMs. Like I said, that's how many beats you have in that you know, uh, um, within that uh, song. And it can change. You can have a song that has different sequences with different BPMs, you know. For this one, we're just working with single, you know, simple, simple stuff. So in order to change your BPM, you could just click and it little gray box will light up here and you can change it to, let's say, 110. OK, so we're going to say 110 is what we're changing it to. So I've got it on 110 now, but if I play my track, you hear that click and the beat are a little bit off, right? So everybody can hear how that's a little bit off. It sounds a little bit wonky there, right? The reason is, is because I wrote this, you know, pattern in 115 beats per minute. So if I wanted to be able to um, not well, not to mention, I also have audio tracks on here that are time warped. So they're set to a different BPM and I've stretched them in order to fit this kind of whole little thing I got going on. So it's important to remember your time signatures what in their originality. OK, so we'll go ahead and put this back on 115 and enter. And now you can hear everything falls back on that one. Okay. So again, we're not going to go any more further than that. That's just basic, basic, basic stuff on your BPM. Okay. Next to that, you have uh, this little thing that says SEQ, which stands for sequence. I'm not going to really go into that. Uh, uh, sequence and sequencing is a whole nother video, you guys, and we will go into that if you are interested. But for these videos that I'm doing, we're not going to be needing that. Okay. Tap is something that you might be needing. So tap is just another way to set a BPM. So you can either tap this little icon here or you can just use T. So if I tap T three times in a certain beat, meaning that certain down beat, right? So if it's boom, 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 boom. So I'm going to boom, 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 boom. So it is now set my time to about 109, right? So you can stay with that and stay with that BPM and say, this is what I'm going to write my entire song on. Or you can just change it by saying, okay, that's the ballpark, but I think it's closer to, you know, 110, right? So then you can just change it and say, that's what I'm going to write my song on. So that's basically how tap tempo works is you can set it just by tapping and saying, I want to write my song at this tempo, or you can already have a tempo in mind. Okay. So next to that, we have this next little toolbar here, which is our play stop you know, and record super simple guys. The only thing we're going to go over with this is when you are recording, when you are recording, it is super important to know that when you are in record mode is different than when you are in overdub mode. Okay. So 
overdub mode is what you want to paste over what you've just recorded. So let's say, for instance, this eight bar loop right here that I have, if I hit record and I start recording over it, by the time it gets to the end of the eight bar loop, it's going to start again and start recording over what I just did. Now, in order to prevent that, what you want to do is you want to overdub. Okay. So in order to activate overdub, you could simply just push overdub. Okay. Or you can push shift R. I love using shift R and I love the overdub for MPC beats because it allows you a click before you come in. What are you talking about, Jeremiah? What does that mean? I will show you. What they did is they actually put this little four click right before your pattern starts. So if you listen here, it kind of has that little intro for you to be able to kind of get yourself together and then be ready to to, to rock it, you know? So that is really cool. So that is shift R to put it into overdub. Okay. And then you can hit your space bar and boom, you, you're ready to rock and roll. Okay. You can play with that. That's a really cool thing to play with, with that. Um, everything else over there is pretty much self-explanatory. Okay. The next little tiny toolbar we're going to do is this little other one in the center right here. So you have something that is your eraser. You have a little something that's your cursor or your selector. They call it selector, but I call it cursor. And you have a pencil. So these things all correspond to what is happening on your grid here or what you're editing at any given point. If you see this, which you might see in something I might not go over in this video, that is what its purpose is. Same thing with the pencil, okay? So with the eraser, you can simply just tap on something and you can erase it, okay? Now you're like, uh oh, what happened? I did that, didn't mean to do that. Don't panic. Command Z is for Mac, what you want to do in order to undo whatever you just did. So obviously you see we did that. Okay. You can erase lots of things, little tiny things here and there, or, um, you know, you can, uh, uh, erase them individually on, on a different line, key lines or whatever, you know, but that's what that is for. The selector is something that you use for, you can either double click on something and you can also delete it. You can delete it with the eraser or you can delete it with the cursor. You bring it back again, just by command Z. The pencil is just basically for writing in whatever you want. Okay. So you can write little, let's say I want this here and this there and whatever you can write it in. And then if you decide, Oh, you know what? Maybe I only want just this one and that one. You can go through with the eraser or you can just hit command Z a bunch of times until you're like, you know what? I didn't like that idea at all. I'm actually going to erase all this and start again. So that is the benefit of that little toolbar right there. Okay. Typically I just use cursor. It's easier. You can expand and move different things and stuff. So, but it's to each his own. Okay. So now that we're done with that little center part, we're going to move on over to our main toolbar right here. So this main toolbar is going to open things on a different toolbar. Okay. So I'm going to explain it again. This toolbar is going to open a window on a different toolbar that is not open right now. Okay. So that is the way that these two things are connected. Okay. So right now we are on this very first icon, which is main mode. Okay. So why is there, is this main mode where the grid is? No, this is your track that you're looking at right here. This is track one. How do I get to where main mode is and where I can see what is in main mode? What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come down to the bottom left and you see this little white box here. It says bottom panel. You can call it bottom panel. You can call it control panel console, whatever you want. That is what that is. Let's go ahead and hit that. And whoa, we got this whole little gray box that pops up right here. Okay. So now that we have this gray box, how do we get to see what is in our main mode, right? Well, MPC beats put in another menu, right? Which they should have because it, you know, allows you to be able to navigate and follow what you want to do and not have clutter all over your main mode console or whatever you're happening to use. So if you notice, there's this other little menu that's right here and it has everything broken down from your quick links to your pad, to your pad perform and to your projects, right? So now I can see all of these things on my track one. Here's my pad. And then I could see what I'm using over here on my pad perform. I could see the, the project stuff I've got in my project, the samples, it's all right here now for me. Okay. Now this whole mode is my main mode. So it's main, main mode is what the, I am looking at right here. This little white box just opens and closes my console. 
Okay, so again, I'm going to explain it one more time. The main mode up here is what I am looking at. That is this stuff that is in front of me right now. The little white box opens and closes my panel. Okay, it opens and closes my console, whatever it happens to be, right? Okay, so now going back up to our main mode, and I know I want you to follow me along here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and go to track view. Now, whoa. All kinds of stuff just happened right now, and you're like probably flipping out. Don't flip out. It's all right. It happened to me too. This is another view that it gives you that is not main mode. I am not necessarily working on the pads and everything. I'm just kind of maybe, you know, wanting to look at everything in an overall picture, okay? So my track view allows me to look at each individual tracks. And for this little, you know, song that we got right here, I've got one track of MIDI stuff. And then I've got a couple of time stretched, you know, audio tracks right here and some melodics, right? And so it just allows me to see everything just in case I want to see it in its entirety and make sure everything's kind of flowing together and whatnot. This little window now, which is our panel window, has now turned into our editing window for what we were just seeing on the big screen up there right here, right? So this now got pushed down right into our little console screen, okay? So don't let it confuse you. I know it can be confusing, but it's not, all right? So now, if we keep going over again to program edit, boom, now we've got a whole nother like, you know, situation going on here, right? Don't panic. This is just what you're looking at for when you are going to be editing your program, which is what it, this is. This is program edit, right? We might be putting some layers in, or I might be making a drum kit, or there's a number of different things that we could be doing in program edit. But if I'm talking about program edit, this is where we are going to want to be, okay? And that is the third little icon from our little main toolbar up here, okay? That's the third icon in, okay? The last two we're going to go over in this are also going to change our you know, screen here. So don't panic. Okay. It's going to be our sample edit. Okay. So our sample edit, boom, now changes us to this. Okay. This is just allowing us to be able to trim our sample to whatever we want it, length we want it. You can hear it by just clicking in the box, right? So I'm just clicking in the box there. I'm not pushing play or anything, just clicking it and you can hear the sample. You can also shorten it to say, I want it, you know, here, then it's only going to play that first part, you know, or you say, no, I want it back. And now it's playing the full sample. Okay. So where that sample comes from and all that, you guys, we're going to go over that stuff when we make those videos. Again, I'm just giving you an example of what this little icon is. The last icon we're going to go over is going to be our pad mixer. So this is what we've got for our pad mixer. Okay. Our pad mixer is just basically whatever I've got playing on my MIDI pads is showing up here on this little mixer. Okay. So if we play Laces Out Dan. Okay, you can see I've got these little meters moving. So I'm able to do different things here. I can throw, you know, different, uh, you know, plugins and stuff in up here and I can, you know, raise the volumes and lower them and all that good stuff. We're not gonna go into mixing techniques, you guys. That's just what that does. It gets you to hear. So in later videos, when I start talking about it, you guys are gonna know where to navigate, okay? So let's go ahead and go back to main mode. Okay, so now we're here in main mode. Okay, so, um, again, guys, if you have any questions about these videos, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm trying to go as slow as possible, but not make like a 45 minute long video. So we're going to keep moving on here. Okay, so if we navigate now, we've done pretty much these first little, you know, four or five icons here. Okay, which is pretty much what you're going to need for now. We're going to actually take your attention now to the bottom left down here. Okay, now the bottom left, you're going to see there's a little eye there, you're going to go ahead and hit that eye and boom, like all this other stuff pops up, right? So this is what we call our inspector. Okay, so they have a lot of these if you worked with different DAWs and different audio software. There's typically an inspector on most of them, you know, and that's just giving you individualized looks at, you know, whatever your track is or what's inside of your track. So, for instance, up here on my track one, okay, I have got this single track with a program that is the RMB kit. Okay, so I've got that on my track one, which you see here, right? This is my little RMB kit that I've got with all the preloaded stuff in it right here. Okay, so you can 
change what you want on your track according to this other little menu that pops down right here, which is kind of like our um, track toolbar, we'll call it, okay? This track toolbar allows you to go from drums, which is pads, or indicated by the four little pads there. You can go to key groups, okay, which we're going to be making videos on, and you can go to plugins, which we will also be making videos on, all right? So those little three icons are going to be important because they're going to be where you're going to navigate on your track and what is going to be being on that MIDI track, right? You can have a key group, you can have a plugin, you can have a combination of things, right? So this is where we are going to be getting those things from and switching back and forth between them. As you see, different things are happening when I click things, right? That goes back to pads, this put a keyboard out, right? So the best thing to do is just kind of explore while you can and just kind of figure out what is what, right? So kind of work in this same area right here, just above this, you see it says bars and loops. Self-explanatory guys, if you turn off the loop, the loop is gonna turn off and the bar, the beat will stop after. Okay, so now it stops, right? It's not looping anymore. So in order to activate the loop, you just hit loop, okay? Or L. Um, the bars I got right here for this little sample are eight bars, okay? Um, you can change that just by clicking in it and saying you want however many bars, you know, this many bars or whatever. That's basically how you change it. Standard is pretty much four bars. I mean, most people work off of all kinds of standards, but four bars just, you know, I think it defaults to like two bars or something. So you can change it right there before you start developing your song, okay? So again, I know I'm going really quick on these things, you guys, but try to keep up. So moving down the chain here, we have these little faders here, as you see. Um, each one of these will correspond to what it is named or what is under the actual fader itself. So if you'd notice when we opened our inspector, another menu popped out right here of these three little guys right here, okay? So each one of these allows us to see our, you know, different faders here in different modes, basically, right? So for the most part, you're only gonna really use these first two modes right here. So those are pretty much the two I'm gonna go over. This is something a little more advanced. It's MIDI channel stuff. You could use that too, but if you wanna know more about that, just leave a comment down below and I can explain it, you know, in a video, you know, or something. So with this guy, we have got our A3 pad, and our R&B kit. So what this is referring to is where I've got my highlighted pad here highlighted, okay? And basically studio standard for pads, you guys, is 16. I'm using the MPK Mini Mach 3, right? So obviously we only have the eight pads, but just because we have eight pads does not mean we can't get to all all of these different things just by moving different banks and all of that stuff. Again, you guys, we're gonna go over all of that in drums, which is the next video coming out, so I'm not gonna go super into that, okay? But that is what these faders are, and this is what this icon gets you to. Now, the next little icon, which is our program channels, right? It allows me to go from track to track, kind of each program, right? And do the overall mix. So if I went back and I played Laces Out Dan, this is only allowing me to turn up and down A3. So let's say I went, let's say I went here to this kick, right? So now it's on A1. So if, now that kick is completely gone because I've got it down, right? So, you know, you can turn it up and down individually, right? This little fader gives me the overall kick of everything, right? So if I turn that, right? Now the, now the whole kit is down, right? But if I come up, you can hear the whole kit and I can bring it up, you know, where I want it, right? So that's what that little first mode is, which is pad channel mode, all right? The next one is program channel. This one is if I want to go to each one of my tracks or each one of my programs and throw them into this little mixing channel, you can do again the overall, but also with moving your outputs. So you can switch between, let's say you have seven tracks, you could put each track in this window by going and highlighting whatever that track is or whatever program it is, right? Highlight it and it will be here then, and then you would have an overall mix right here of everything together. So let's say your guitar is a little bit low, go to your guitar track, it will show up here, turn it up a little bit, and then you go, you know what? The overall mix needs to maybe come down a little bit. You can do that with your outputs here. Okay, so moving right along, you guys, uh, again, like I said, I'm not going to really go over the last one too, too much. Uh, but if you want to know more, 
just leave a comment down below. Okay, so the next ones that we got right here are the MIDI keyboard, which the MIDI keyboard just kind of comes up at the bottom down here, just in case you need to see the full scan of the keyboard. Okay, and then the next and last one in that little chain right there is our huge mixer that's down here. Okay, and so this is like our main mixing station right here for everything. And uh, you can, you know, bring things in and out. You can have more of things. You can see each individual pad. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can do. I'm not going to really go over this a lot, but um, that is the, the main overall when you start to get into mixing your track. This is where it's going to happen. We'll make a video on this, guys, if you want to figure out how to do it. I don't know how to get back to my main thing, like my main like page from there, so I usually just go to keyboard shortcuts and go back and then it takes me back to here. But um, if you know how to do that, by the way, leave a comment down below. I don't know how to get from my, you know, uh, mixer window back to my main window right here. So, hey, there's some homework for you guys. If somebody knows how to do that, please leave a comment down below because even me needs help every once in a while. So moving on to the very last stuff here, guys, we're going to be down at this last little window here. And we have got uh, just, uh, you know, stuff that I already went over in the first video. You've got your Q links here. You always want to make sure these Q links are enabled. OK, obviously disabled, enable them. Make sure that your whatever, you know, controller you're having to use is in this little window here. So I'm using the MPK Mini 3. So it's there and all of your little knobbies and everything should be coinciding if you look down there in the left with what's going on. You see, boop, there's my playhead right there. I can move the cursor and I can move my program volume and all that. Okay. Again, like I said, first video, there's a lot of that and how we do it. Okay. So Kind of moving on from there, you have this little thing about information and welcome to MPC Beats. Um, you have this thing, which just gives you a lay down of everything that you got going on in your project right there, just in case you want to find a specific sample. Next to that, you've got uh, project notes and stuff. And I've used this a couple of times. It actually does come in handy when you're writing lyrics or whatever. Um, next to that, you've got undo history, which we don't really need to mess with that. So these last ones right here are how I'm going to see my expansion packs, right? Now, the first one that it gives you is this little mode where you're able to kind of see everything and your different, you know, you have your different programs and projects and everything kind of up. It's kind of a menu within a menu within like another menu, right? If you go to the one in the middle there, it kind of gives you this layout of everything flat. I like this flat layout personally. Um, it's just easier to use. So I typically use this flat layout. Um, and then if you just click on one of the little icons, you see everything pops down right here. You can, uh, you know, go to your programs and see them all right here and, you know, see, I want that and I want this drum kit or whatever. You know, I think it's just, uh, I'm, I'm just used to working like this. So this is personally the one I use use which one fits you. Okay. So next to that, we have another little uh, folder kind of mode here. We can go into this in great detail in a video because this is probably a video in itself and how this works. It's very confusing. But if you want to see some videos on that, let me know, leave a comment. And lastly, this is just a little status bar, just you know, a questionnaire kind of thing for NPC beats and stuff, I'm guessing. So, but, um, that's pretty much it guys. Uh, again, like I said, if you have any questions, leave them down below and hopefully we can get them answered sooner than later. All right, you guys. So that's pretty much it. That sums it up. Uh, really basic stuff. Like I said, quick video on, you know, how to navigate around and all of that good stuff. Uh, if you guys have any questions on this video, please do not hesitate to leave a comment down below. Okay. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you guys like it, we do lots of different stuff on this channel. It's not targeted at one thing. We do looping and you might see some fishing videos and some more NPC beats videos or whatever. It's kind of just a big pool of different things that we like to do here here at Team Uncoordinated and Team Unco Studios. So want to thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for all the love and support that we get from everybody. Um, after this video, we are going to be working on a three-part series of drums, key groups, and plugins. So those are the next videos that are going to be coming out within the next couple of weeks, you guys. We are developing those right now. Again, don't hesitate to still leave comments and still ask questions about different things you might want to know about or whatever. Maybe I might have left something out and you want me to elaborate on it, okay? So please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much and peace and love to you all and we'll see you on the next video. Later.